Act One of The Wonder, A Woman Keeps a Secret by Susanna Sentliver, edited by Augustine Daly, 1838 to 1899. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The cast of characters in the order in which they first speak. Frederick, read by Adrian Stevens. Don Lopez, read by Algy Pug. Lizardo, read by Todd. Colonel Britton, read by Jeff Butterfield. Gibby, read by Alan Mapstone. Vasquez, read by David Purdy. Inis, read by Avai. Donna Isabella, read by Jen Broda. Flora, read by Sonia. Donna Violante, read by T.J. Burns. Don Felix, read by Greg Giordano. Don Pedro, read by Peter Brash. Stage directions, read by Wayne Cook. Act One. Scene one, a street. Enter Don Lopez left, meeting Frederick right. My lord, Don Lopez. How do you, Frederick? At your lordship's service. I'm glad to see you look so well, my lord. I hope Antonio's out of danger. Quite the contrary. His fever increases, they tell me. And the searchers out of opinion, his wound is mortal. Your son, Don Felix, is safe, I hope. I hope so, too. They offer large rewards to apprehend him. When heard your lordship from him? Not since he went. I forbade him writing till the public news gave him an account of Antonio's health, for I intend to marry my daughter to Don Guzman, whom I expect from Holland every day, whither he went to take possession of a large estate left him by his uncle. You will not surely sacrifice the lovely Isabella to age, avarice, and a fool? Pardon the expression, my lord, but my concern for your beauteous daughter transports me beyond that good manners which I ought to pay to your lordship's presence. I can't deny the justness of the character, Frederick, but I resolve she shall marry Don Guzman the moment he arrives. Though I could not govern my son, I will my daughter, I assure you. This match, my lord, is more preposterous than that which you proposed to your son, from whence arose this fatal quarrel. Don Antonio's sister, Elvira, wanted beauty only, but Guzman everything but... Money, and that will purchase everything. And so, adieu. Exit right. Monstrous! These are the resolutions which destroy the comforts of matrimony. Enter Lissardo left in a riding habit. Lissardo, from whence came you? That letter will inform you, sir. I hope your master's safe. I left him so. I have another to deliver which requires haste. Your most humble servant, sir. Bowing crosses to right. To Violante, I suppose. The same. Exit right. Frederick reads. Dear Frederick, the two chief blessings of this life are a friend and a mistress. To be debarred the sight of those is not to live. I hear nothing of Antonio's death, and therefore resolve to venture to thy house this evening, impatient to see Violante, and embrace my friend, yours, Felix. Pray heaven he comes undiscovered. Enter Colonel Britton, right. Ha, Colonel Britton. Frederick, I rejoice to see thee. What brought you to Lisbon, Colonel? La fortune de la guerre, as the French say. If you are not provided of a lodging, Colonel, pray command my house while you stay. If I were sure I should not be troublesome, I would accept your offer, Frederick. So far from trouble, Colonel, I shall take it as a particular favour. What have we here? My footman, this is our country dress, you must know, which for the honour of Scotland 
I make all my servants wear. Enter Gibby in a Highland dress, right. What am I to do with the horses, and like your honour? Crosses centre. They'll take cold in they stand in the causeway. Oh, I'll take care of them. What, how, uh, Vasquez? Enter Vasquez, right. Put the horses, which that honest fellow will show you, into my stable, do you hear? And feed them well. Yes, sir. Vasquez crosses to Gibby and bows to him. Sir, by my master's orders, I am, sir, your most obsequious, humble servant. Be pleased to lead the way. Speed, gang ye gate, sir, I shall follow you. Vasquez goes left. As te hungry to feed on compliments. Exit left, Vasquez bowing him off. Ha, ha, a comical fellow. Well, how do you like our country, Colonel? Why, faith, Frederick, a man might pass his time agreeably enough, but to behold such troops of soft, plump, tender, melting girls through a confounded grating gives us Britain strong temptations to plunder. Wilt thou recommend me to a wife, hath friend? She must be very handsome, I suppose. The handsomer the better. But be sure she has a nose. Aye, aye, and some gold. Oh, very much gold. I shall never be able to swallow the matrimonial pill if it be not well gilded. <laughs> Beauty will make it slide down nimbly. At first, perhaps it may. I confess, Frederick, women are the prettiest playthings in nature, but gold, substantial gold, gives them the air, the mien, the shape, the grace and beauty of a goddess. And has not gold the same divinity in their eyes, Colonel? Too often. None marry now for love, that's a jest at least. The self-same bargain serves for wife and beast. You are always gay, Colonel. Come, shall we take a refreshing glass at my house and consider what has been said? I have two or three compliments to discharge for some friends, and then I shall wait on you with pleasure. In the close of the evening, I will endeavour to kiss your hand. Adieu. I shall expect you with impatience. Exit Colonel Left and Frederick Right. Scene 2. A room in Don Lopez's house. Enter Isabella, followed by Inus, her maid, Right. For goodness sake, madam, where are you going in this pet? Anywhere to avoid matrimony. The thought of a husband is terrible to me. I of an old husband. But if you may choose for yourself, I fancy matrimony would be no such frightful thing to you. You are pretty much in the right, Inez. But to be forced into the arms of an idiot who has neither person to please the eye, sense to charm the ear, nor generosity to supply those defects... I must contrive some way to avoid Don Guzman, and yet stay in my own country. Enter Don Lopez, left. Don Lopez, aside. Must you so, mistress? But I shall take care to prevent you. Isabella, whither are you going, my child? To church, sir. Inus, aside. The old rogue has certainly overheard her. Your devotion must needs be very strong, or your memory very weak, my dear. Why, vespers are over for this night. Come, come, you shall have a better errand to church than to say your prayers there. Don Guzman is arrived in the river, and I expect him ashore tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow? He writes me word that his estate in Holland is worth twelve thousand crowns a year, which together with what he had before, will make thee the happiest wife in Lisbon. And the most unhappy woman in the world. Taking his hand. Oh, sir, if I have any power in your heart, if the tenderness of a father be not quite extinct, hear me with patience. No objection against the marriage, and I will hear whatsoever thou hast to say. Remember, tis your duty to obey. I never disobeyed before, and wish I had not reason now, but nature has got the better of my duty, and makes me loathe the harsh commands you lay. Ha ha ha, very fine. Ha ha ha. 
death itself would be welcome. Are you sure of that? I am your daughter, my lord, and can boast as strong a resolution as yourself. I'll die before I marry Guzman. Say you so? I'll try that presently. Draws. Here, let me see with what dexterity you can breathe a vein now. Offers her his sword. The point is pretty sharp. Twill do your business, I warrant you. Inus going between them. Bless me, sir, what do you mean to put a sword into the hands of a desperate woman? Desperate? <laughs> you see how desperate she is. What? Art thou frighted, little Belle? Huh? I confess I am startled at your morals, sir. Ay, ay, child. Thou hadst better take the man. I shall take neither, sir. Death has many doors, and when I can live no longer with pleasure, I shall find one to let him in without your aid. Seest thou so, my dear Bell? Odds, I'm afraid thou art a little lunatic, Bell. I must take care of thee, child. Takes a hold of her and pulls a key out of his pocket. I shall make bold to secure thee, my dear. I'll see if locks and bars can keep thee till Guzman comes. Go, get into your chamber. Pushes her in and locks flat. There I'll your boasted resolution try, and see who'll get the better, you or I. As he locks Isabella in closet, Inus follows close behind him. As he advances to speak his couplet, she taps on the door. He hears her, runs after her, catches her by the nape of the neck, and runs her off. Scene 3. Handsome apartment at Don Pedro's. Large window center. Doors right and left. Enter Violante, reading a letter, and Flora following. What? Must that letter be read again? Yes, and again, and again, and again. A thousand times again. A letter from a faithful lover can never be read too often. It speaks such kind, such soft, such tender things. Crosses right, sits, kisses it. <sighs> but always the same language. It does not charm less for that. Reads. <sighs> My all that's charming, since life's not life exiled from thee, this night shall bring me to thy arms. Frederick and thee are all I trust. This six weeks' absence has been, in love's account, six hundred years. When it is dark, expect the wanted signal at thy window. Till when, adieu, thine more than his own, Felix. <sighs> Flora aside. Who would not have said as much to a lady of her beauty and twenty thousand pounds? Were I a man, methinks I could have said a hundred finer things. What would you have said? I would have compared your eyes to the stars, your teeth to ivory, your lips to coral, your neck to alabaster, your shape to... No more of your bombast. Truth is the best eloquence in a lover. Rises. What proof remains ungiven of his love? When his father threatened to disinherit him for refusing Don Antonio's sister, from whence sprang this unhappy quarrel, did it shake his love for me? And now, though strict inquiry runs through every place, with large rewards to apprehend him, does he not venture all for me? But you know, madam, your father, Don Pedro, designs you for a nun. To be sure, you look very like a nun. And says your grandfather left you your fortune upon that condition. Not without my approbation, girl, when I come to one and twenty, as I am informed. But, however, I shall run the risk of that. Go call in Lissardo. Sits right. Yes, madam. Aside. Now for a thousand verbal questions. Goes to door and beckons to Lissardo, who enters. 
Well, and how do you do, Lissardo? Ah, oh, very weary, madam. Apart to Flora. Faith, thou lookest wondrous pretty, Flora. Flora apart to Lissardo. <laughs> You'd make one believe you are wondrous fond now. Where did you leave your master? Lissardo apart to Flora. Odd, if I had you alone, I'd show you how fond I could be. Where did you leave your master? At a little farmhouse, madam, about five miles off. He'll be at Don Frederick's in the evening. Apart to Flora. Odd. I will so revenge myself of those lips of thine. Is he in health? Flora, apart to Lissardo. Oh, you counterfeit wondrous well. Lissardo, apart to Flora. No. Everybody knows I counterfeit very ill. Violante rises and comes forward. How say you? Is Felix ill? What's his distemper, huh? Love, madam, love. In short, madam, I believe he has thought of nothing but your ladyship. Ever since he left Lisbon, I am sure he could not, if I may judge of his heart by my own. Looks lovingly upon Flora. How came you so well acquainted with your master's thoughts, Lissardo? By an infallible rule, madam. Words are the pictures of the mind, you know. Now, to prove he thinks of nothing but you, he talks of nothing but you. For example, madam, coming from shooting t'other day, with a brace of partridges, Lizardo, said he, go bid the cook roast me this brace of violantes. To Flora. I flew into the kitchen, full of thoughts of thee, and cried, Here, cook, roast me this brace of florellas. Flora to Lissardo. <laughs> Excellent. You mimic your master, then, it seems. Another time, madam, the priest came to make him a visit. He called out hastily, Lizardo, said he, bring a violante for my father to sit down on. Then he often mistook my name, madam, and called me Violante. In short, I heard it so often that it became as familiar to me as my prayers. You live very merrily, then, it seems. Oh, exceedingly merry, madam. Kisses Flora's hand. Ha! Huh. Exceeding merry? Had you treats and balls? Oh, yes, yes, madam, several. Flora apart to Lissardo. You are mad, Lissardo. You don't mind what my lady says to you. Violante aside. Ha! Huh. Balls? Is he so merry in my absence? And did your master dance, Lissardo? Dance, madam? Where, madam? Why, at those balls you speak of. Balls? What balls, madam? Why, sure you are in love, Lissardo. Did you not say but now you had balls where you had been? Balls, madam? What balls, madam? Odd's life, I ask your pardon, madam. I, I, I had mislaid some wash balls of my master's the other day, and because I could not think where I had laid them, just when he asked for them, he very fairly broke my head, madam, and now it seems I can think of nothing else. Alas, he dance, madam? No, no, poor gentleman, he is as melancholy as an unbraced drum. Poor Felix. There, wear that ring for your master's sake, and let him know I shall be ready to receive him. Exit right. I shall, madam. Puts on the ring. Methinks a diamond ring is a vast addition to the little finger of a gentleman. Admires his hand. Flora aside. That ring must be mine. Well, Lissardo, what haste you make to pay off arrears now? Look how the fellow stands. E gads, methinks I have a very pretty hand. And very white, and the shape. Faith, I never minded it so much before. In my opinion, 
it is a very fine-shaped hand, and becomes a diamond ring as well as the first grandees in Portugal. The man's transported. Is this your love? This your impatience? Lissardo takes snuff. <laughs> now, in my mind, I take snuff with a very jaunty air. Struts across right. Sweet Mr. Lissardo. Curtsies. If I may presume to speak to you without affronting your little finger. Odd so, madam. I ask your pardon. Is it to me or to the ring you direct your discourse, madam? Up and across left. Madam, good luck. How much a diamond ring improves one. Why, though I say it, I can carry myself as well as anybody. But what were you going to say, child? Why, I was going to say that I fancy you had best let me keep that ring. It will be a very pretty wedding ring, Lissardo, would it not? Hmm, ah, but, 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 I believe I shan't marry yet a while. Cross is right. You shan't, you say? <laughs> Very well. I suppose you designed that ring for Ines. No, no. I never bribe an old acquaintance. Perhaps I might let it sparkle in the eyes of a stranger a little, till we come to a right understanding. But then, like all other mortal things, it would return from whence it came. Insolent! Is that your manner of dealing? With all but thee. Kiss me, you little rogue, you. Hugs her and turns her right. <laughs> little rogue. Pretty fellow, don't be so familiar. Pushes him away. If I mayn't keep your ring, I can keep my kisses. You can, you say? Spoke with the air of a chambermaid. <laughs> Replied with the spirit of a serving man. Re-enter Violante, right. Prithee, Flora, don't let you and I fall out. I am in a merry humor, and shall certainly fall in somewhere. What care I where you fall in? Why do you keep Lucardo so long, Flora, when you don't know how soon my father may awake? His afternoon naps are never long. Flora, aside. Had Don Felix been with her, she would not have thought the time long. These ladies consider nobody's wants but their own. Go, go, let him out. Flora goes up to table and gets candle. Yes, madam. I fly, madam. Exit Lissardo and Flora, left. The day draws in, and night, the lover's friend, advances. Night, more welcome than the sun to me, because it brings my love. Flora within. Oh, thieves! Thieves! Murder! Murder! Violante shrieks. Ah, what do I hear? Felix is certainly pursued and will be taken. Re-enter Flora with a broken candle and candlestick running left. How now? Answer me quickly, what is the matter? Oh, madam! As I was letting out Lissardo, a gentleman rushed between him and me, struck down my candle, and is bringing a dead person in his arms into our house. A dead person? Heaven grant it does not prove my Felix. Here they are, madam. I'll retire till you discover the meaning of this accident. Exit right. Flora places chair center. Enter Colonel Britton, left, with Isabella in his arms, whom he sets down in a chair and addresses himself to Flora. Madam, the necessity this lady was under of being conveyed into some house with speed and secrecy will, I hope, excuse any indecency I might be guilty of in pressing so rudely into this. I am an entire stranger to her name and circumstances. I commit her, madam, to your care, and fly to make her retreat secure. If the street be clear, Permit me to return, and learn from her own mouth if I can be further serviceable. Pray, madam, what is the lady of this house called? Violante, signor. Are you she, madam? 
only her woman, signor. You are humble servant, mistress. Pray be careful of the lady. In taking out his handkerchief to get at his purse, drops a letter and exits. To Moidores. Well, he's a generous fellow. This is the only way to make one careful. I see these military rules are just the same in every country. They understand the constitution of the chambermaid. Gets left of chair. Re-enter Violante, right. Was you distracted, Flora, to tell my name to a man you never saw? Unthinking wench! Who knows what this may turn to? What? Is the lady dead? <gasps> ah, heaven! Tis Isabella, sister to my Felix. What has befallen her? Pray heaven he's safe. Run and fetch some cold water. Stay, stay, Flora. Isabella, friend, speak to me. Oh, speak to me. Oh, hold, dear father, do not force me. Indeed, I cannot love him. How wild she talks. Where am I? Rises. With one as sensible of thy pain, as thou thyself canst be. Violante, what kind star preserved and lodged me here? It was a terrestrial star called a man, madam. Pray Jupiter he proves a lucky one. Oh, I remember now. Forgive me, dear Violante. My thoughts run so much upon the danger I escaped, I forgot. May I not know your story? Thou art no stranger to one part of it. I have often told thee that my father designed to sacrifice me to Don Guzman, who, it seems, is just returned from Holland. Upon my refusing to obey him, he locked me into my chamber, vowing to keep me there till he arrived and forced me to consent. I know my father to be positive, never to be won from his design, and having no hope left me to escape the marriage, I leaped from the window into the street. You have not hurt yourself, I hope? No. A gentleman passing by, by accident, caught me in his arms. At first my fright made me apprehend it was my father, till he assured me to the contrary. Oh, he's a very fine gentleman, I promise you, madam, and a well-bred man, I warrant him. I think I never saw a grandee put his hand into his pocket with a better air in my whole lifetime. Then he opened his purse with such a grace that nothing but his manner of presenting me with the gold could equal. Go, leave us, Flora. Exit Flora, left. But how came you hither, Isabella? I know not. I desired the stranger to convey me to the next monastery, but ere I reached the door I saw, or fancied that I saw, Lizardo, my brother's man, and the thought that his master might not be far off flung me into a swoon, which is all that I can remember. Cross his center. Ha! <laughs> What's here? Picks up letter on stage. For Colonel Britton, to be left at the post house in Lisbon. This must be dropped by the stranger who brought me hither. Thou art fallen into the hands of a soldier. Take care he does not lay thee under contribution, girl. Rises. I find he is a gentleman, and if he is but unmarried, I could be content to follow him all the world over but I shall never see him more, I fear. Sits left, sighs, and pauses. What makes you sigh, Isabella? The fear of falling into my father's clutches again. Can I be serviceable to you? Isabella rises. Yes, if you conceal me two or three days. You command my house, and secrecy. I thank you, Violante. I wish you would oblige me with Mrs. Flora a while. Violante taps bell. I'll send her to you. I must watch if father be still asleep, or here will be no room for Felix. Exit right. Well, I don't know what ails me. Methinks I wish I could find this stranger out. Re-enter Flora left. Does your ladyship want me, madam? Aye, Flora, I resolve to make you my confidant. 
i shall endeavour to discharge my duty madam i doubt it not and desire you to accept this as a token of my gratitude oh i should have been your humble servant without a fee i believe it but to the purpose do you think if you saw the gentleman who brought me hither you should know him again from a thousand madam i have an excellent memory where a handsome man is concerned when he went away he said he would return again immediately i wonder he comes not here did you say you rejoice me crosses left though i'll not see him if he comes could not you contrive to give him a letter with the air of a duenna not in this house you must veil and follow him he must not know it comes from me what do you take me for a novice in love affairs though i have not practised the art since i have been in donna violante's service yet i have not lost the theory of a chambermaid crosses up left of table isabella sits do you write the letter and leave the rest to me here here here's pen ink and paper i'll do it in a minute sits at table centre and writes so <laughs> this is a business after my own heart love always takes care to reward his labourers oh i long to see the other two moidores methinks there is a grace peculiar to the military in making a present isabella rises so i have done now if he does but find this house again if he should not i warrant i'll find him if he's in lisbon for i have a strong possession that he has two more moidores as good as ever were told puts the letter into her bosom re-enter violante left flora watch my papa he's fast asleep in his study if you find him stir give me notice felix taps at the window left hark i hear felix at the window admit him instantly and then to your post exit flora left what say you violante is my brother come it is his signal at the window isabella kneels oh violante i conjure thee by all the love thou bearest to felix by thy own generous nature nay more by that unspotted virtue thou art mistress of do not discover to my brother i am here contrary to your desire be assured i never shall but where's the danger isabella rises art thou born in lisbon and ask that question he'll think his honour blemished by my disobedience and would restore me to my father or kill me therefore dear dear girl depend on my friendship nothing shall draw the secret from these lips not even felix though at the hazard of his love i hear him coming retire into that closet remember violante upon thy promise my very life depends exit right when i betray thee may i share thy fate enter felix left my felix runs into his arms felix in a rapture my violante what hazards dost thou run for me oh how shall i requite thee if during this tedious painful exile thy thoughts have never wandered from thy felix thou hast made me more than satisfaction <laughs> can there be room within this heart for any but thyself no if the god of love were lost to all the rest of humankind thy image would secure him in my breast i am all truth all love all faith and know no jealous fears my heart's the proper sphere where love resides could he quit that he would be nowhere found and yet violante i'm in doubt did i ever give thee cause to doubt my felix true love has many fears and fears as many eyes as fame yet sure i think they see no fault in thee colonel Britton taps at the window left what's that taps again what 
I hear nothing. Again. Ha! Huh. What means the signal at your window? Someone, uh, perhaps in passing by, might have accidentally hit it. It can be nothing else. Colonel Britton without at window. Hist! Hist! Dona Violante! Dona Violante! They use your name by accident too, do they, madam? Crosses to right. Re-enter Flora left. Flora left, aside to Violante. There is a gentleman at the window, madam, which I fancy to be the same who brought Isabella hither. Shall I admit him? Violante aside. Admit distraction, rather. Thou art the cause of this. Unthinking wench. What? Has Mrs. Scout brought you fresh intelligence? Death, I'll know the bottom of this immediately. About to go. Scout? I scorn your words, senor. The colonel taps louder. Flora aside. It must be the colonel. Now to deliver my letter to him. Exit left. Violante to Felix. Nay, nay, nay. You must not leave me. Runs and catches hold of him. Oh, tis not fair not to answer the gentleman, madam. It is none of his fault that his visit proves unseasonable. Pray let me go. My presence is but a restraint upon you. Struggles to get from her as the taps grow louder. Hark, he grows impatient at your delay. Why do you hold the man whose absence would oblige you? Pray, let me go, madam. Consider the gentleman wants you at the window. Confusion. Struggles. It is not me he wants. Death? Not you? Is there another of your name in the house? Seizes her hand and leads her toward the window. But, come on, convince me of the truth of what you say. Open the window. If his business does not lie with you, your conversation may be heard. This, and only this, can take off my suspicion. What? Do you pause? Downstage right. Oh, guilt! Guilt! Have I caught you? Nay, then I'll leap the balcony. If I remember, this way also leads to it. Goes. Hold, 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 hold. Not for the world you enter there. Aside. Which way shall I preserve his sister from his knowledge? What? Have I touched you? Do you fear your lover's life? I fear for none but you. For goodness sake, do not speak so loud, my Felix. If my father hears you, I am lost forever. With tenderness and reprovingly, one hand on his shoulder. Felix. Felix. As he still looks angry, her woman's pride grits the better of her, and she goes toward the window. Felix still holds her hand and follows her, listening as she throws open the window and speaks. She speaks slowly. As Britton replies, Felix starts a step, then turns and looks her in the face. Your curiosity shall be satisfied. Goes to the window, left, throws up the sash. Whoever you are, that with such insolence dare use my name, and give the neighborhood pretense to reflect upon my conduct, I charge you instantly to be gone, or expect the treatment you deserve. Colonel Britton, without. I ask pardon, madam, and will obey. But when I left this house tonight... Good. You are mistaken in the house, I suppose, sir. No, no, he's not mistaken. Pray, madam, let the gentleman go on. Pray be gone, sir. I know of no business you have here. I wish I did not know it either. But this house contains my soul. Then can you blame my body for hovering about it? Beautiful, beautiful. I tell you again, you are mistaken. However, for your own satisfaction, call tomorrow. Matchless impudence. An assignation before my face. Down right, crosses left, and up to window. No, he shall not live to meet your wishes. 
takes out a pistol and goes toward the window right. She catches hold of him. Ah! Hold! I conjure you! Tomorrow's an edge, madam. May I not be admitted tonight? If you be a gentleman, I command your absence. Aside. Unfortunate. What will my stars do with me? I have done. Only this. Be careful of my life, for it is in your keeping. Exit from the window. Pray observe the gentleman's request, madam. Walks from her. I am all confusion. You are all truth, all love, all faith. O oh, thou, all woman, how have I been deceived? So death could you not have imposed upon me for this one night? Could neither my faithful love, nor the hazard I have run to see you, make me worthy to be cheated on? O oh, thou... Felix! Felix repeats... When I left this house tonight, 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 Violante aside. Oh, Isabella, what hast thou involved me in? Felix repeats. This house contains my soul, oh, sweet soul. Violante aside. Yet, I resolve to keep the secret. Felix repeats. Be careful of my life, for tis in your keeping. Fiends, fiends, how ugly she appears. Looks at her. Believe me, Felix, I have not injured you, nor am I false. Not false? Not injured me? Oh, Violante, not false? Oh, monstrous. Indeed I am not. There is a cause, Felix. Ah, which I must not reveal. Oh, think how far honor can oblige your sex. Then allow a woman may be bound by the same rule to keep a secret. Honor, what hast thou to do with honor? A secret, ha, 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 his affairs are wondrous safe. Who trusts his secrets to a woman's keeping? but you need give yourself no trouble about clearing this point madam for you are become so indifferent to me that your truth and falsehood are the same re-enter flora door left so i have delivered my letter to the colonel and received my fee <laughs> madam your father bade me see what noise that was for goodness sake sir why do you speak so loud oh i understand my cue mistress my absence is necessary i'll oblige you crosses center going violante takes hold of him oh let me undeceive you first impossible tis very possible if i durst durst <laughs> durst Another time, I'll tell thee all. Nay, now or never. <sighs> now it cannot be. Then it shall never be. Most ungrateful of thy sex, farewell. Breaks from her and exit, left. Yet not even this shall draw the secret from me. <sighs> that I'll preserve. Let fortune frown or smile, and trust to love, my love to reconcile. Curtain. End of Act One. Act Two of The Wonder, A Woman Keeps a Secret by Susanna Sentliver, edited by Augustine Daly. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Scene 1. A handsome chamber in Frederick's house. Enter Lissardo and Inus, right. Your lady run away, and you know not whither, say you? She never greatly cared for me after finding you and I together. 
But you are very grave, methinks, Lissardo. Lissardo, looking on the ring. Not at all. I have some thoughts, indeed, of altering my course of living. There is a critical minute in every man's life, which, if we can but lay hold of, he may make his fortune. Inus aside. Ah, what do I see? A diamond ring? Where the deuce had he that ring? You have got a very pretty ring here, Lissardo. Aye, the trifle is pretty enough. But the lady which gave it to me is a beauty, I assure you. Cross is right, cocks his hat and struts. Inus aside. I can't bear this, the lady. What lady, pray? Oh, fie! That's a question to ask a gentleman. A gentleman? Is this your love for me? Ungrateful man, you'll break my heart, so you will. Bursts into tears. Lissardo aside. Poor tender-hearted fool. If I knew who gave you that ring, I'd tear her eyes out, so I would. Sobs. Lissardo aside. So, now the jade wants a little coaxing. Why dost thou weep for now, my dear, huh? I suppose Flora gave you that ring, but I'll... Cross is right. No, the devil take me if she did. You make me swear now. I did but joke. The ring is not of mine. It is my master's. I am to give it to be new set, that's all. Therefore, pray thee dry thy eyes and kiss me. Come. Enter Flora unobserved. And do you really speak truth now? Why do you doubt it? Flora aside. So, so, very well. I thought there was an intrigue between him and Ines, for all he has forsworn it so often. Nor haven't you seen Flora since you come to town? Flora aside. Ha! Huh. How dares she mention my name? No, by this kiss, I ha'n't. Kisses her. Flora aside. Here's a dissembling varlet. Nor don't you love her at all. Love the devil. There, now, you've made me swear again. Why, did I not always tell thee she was my aversion? Did you so, villain? Gives him a box on the ear. Lissardo aside. Sounds, she's here. I have made a fine piece of work on it. What's that for, huh? Goes up to her. I shall tell you by and by, Mrs. Frippery, if you don't get about your business. Who do you call Frippery, Mrs. Trollope? Pray get about your business if you go to that. I hope you pretend to no right and title here. Crosses to Lissardo. Lissardo aside. Do they take me for an acre of land that they quarrel about right and title to me? Pray, what right have you, mistress, to ask that question? Lissardo up and down. Flor and Inus separate. No matter for that. I can show a better title to him than you, I believe. Now, my dears, don't exert yourself so much about me. I might, in a modest way, satisfy both your demands upon me you satisfy <laughs> no sirrah i am not to be satisfied so soon as you think perhaps no nor i neither what do you make no difference between us you pitiful fellow you how often have you sworn to me that you hated ines and only carried fair for the good cheer she gave you but that you could never like a woman with crooked legs, you said. How? How crooked legs? Raises her dress a little. Lissardo drops down on his knee and holds his hat before his eyes. Prithee, my dear, moderate thy passion. I'd have you to know, sirrah, my legs were never. Flora aside. <laughs> I am glad I have done some mischief. Lissardo to Inus. Art thou really so foolish as to mind what an enraged woman says? Don't you see she does it on purpose to part you and I? Runs to Flora. Could not you find the joke without putting yourself in a passion? 
You silly girl, you! Why, I saw you follow us plain enough, and said all this that you might not go back with only your labor for your pains. But come, kiss and be friends. Don't think to coax me. Hang your kisses. The two maids go up and down, Lissardo between them, and meet in center, as if to scratch at each other, when Felix's voice stops them. Felix without. Lissardo. Lissardo aside. Odds heart, there's my master. The devil take both these jades for me. What shall I do with them? Inus aside. Ha! Tis Don Felix's voice. I would not have him find me here with his footman for the world. Felix without. Why, Lissardo, Lissardo. Coming, sir. What a plague will you do? Bless me. Which way shall I get out? Lissardo crosses center. Nay, nay. You must e'en set your quarrel aside, and be content to be mewed up in this clothes press together, or stay where you are and face it out. There is no help for it. Ah, oh, put me anywhere rather than that. Come, come, let me in. Lissardo opens door. All three run up and jam in doorway. Inus and Flora face to face. Finally, Flora exit, and Inus comes forward. I'll see her hanged before I'll go into the place where she is. I'll trust fortune for my deliverance. Here used to be a pair of back stairs. I'll try to find them out. Exit right. Enter Don Felix and Frederick, left. Was you asleep, sirrah, that you did not hear me call? I did hear you, and answered you I was coming, sir. Go, get the horses ready. I'll leave Lisbon to-night, never to see it more. Crosses. Hey, Day, what's the matter now? Exit left. Pray tell me, Don Felix, what has ruffled your temper thus? A woman, oh, friend. Who can name woman and forget inconstancy? Come, this is some groundless jealousy. Love raises many fears. No, no, my ears conveyed the truth into my heart, and reason justifies my anger. O oh, my friend, Violante's false, and I have nothing left but thee in Lisbon, which can make me wish ever to see it more except revenge upon my rival, of whom I am ignorant. Oh, that some miracle would reveal him to me, that I might through his heart punish her infidelity. Enter Vasquez left. Sir, I bring you joyful news. What's the matter? I am told that Don Antonio is out of danger, and now in the palace. I wish it be true. Then I'm at liberty to watch my rival and pursue my sister. Prithee, Frederick, inform thyself of the truth of this report. Paces up and down. Frederick crosses. I will this minute. Do you hear? To Vasquez. Let nobody enter Don Felix till my return. Exit left. I'll observe, sir. Exit left. Flora opens door right. Oh, they have almost frightened me out of my wits, I'm sure. Now Felix is alone, I have a good mind to pretend I came with a message from my lady. But how then shall I say I came into the cupboard? Vasquez without. I tell you, madam, Don Felix is not here. Violante without. I tell you, sir, he is here, and I will see him. What, what, what noise is that? Enter Violante left. My stars! My lady, here! Closes door. You are as difficult of access, sir, as a first minister of state. Unveils, curtsies very ceremoniously, and smiles at his surly looks. If your visit was destined to Frederick, madam, he is abroad. No, sir. The visit is to you. You are very punctual in your ceremonies, madam. Though I did not come to return your visit, but to take that which your civility ought to have brought me. If my eyes, my ears, and my understanding lied, then I am in your debt. Else not, madam. She is surprised and offended at his saying so gross a word. 
I will not charge them with a term so gross to say they lied. But call it a mistake. Nay, call it anything to excuse my Felix. Could I, think ye? Could I put off my pride so far, poorly to dissemble a passion which I did not feel, or seek a reconciliation with what I did not love? No law, while single, binds us to obey. But your sex are obliged to pay a deference to all womankind. These are fruitless arguments. Tis most certain thou wert dearer to these eyes than all that heaven ever gave to charm the sense of man. But I would rather tear them out than suffer them to delude my reason and enslave my peace. Can you love without esteem? And where is the esteem for her you still suspect? Oh, Felix, there is a delicacy in love, which equals even a religious faith. True love never doubts the object it adores, and skeptics there will disbelieve their sight. Your notions are too refined for mine, madam. Re-enter Vasquez. How now, sirrah? What do you want? Only my master's cloak out of this press, sir. That's all. Cost is behind to right. Make haste, then. Vasquez opens the door right and sees Flora. Oh, the devil, the devil. Exit left. <gasps> Discovered. Nay, then, legs befriend me. Crosses stage and runs out left. A woman concealed? Very well, Felix. A woman in the press? Re-enter Lissardo left. Sir, the horses are. How the devil came a woman there, sirrah? Seizes Lissardo and throws him round. Lissardo aside. What shall I say now? Now, Lissardo, show your wit to bring your master off. Off, madam? Nay, 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 there, there needs be no great wit to, to, to bring him off, madam. For she did and she did not come as, as, as a, a... A man may say directly to, 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 to speak with my master, madam. I see by your stammering, Lissardo, that your invention is at a very low ebb. Steph, rascal, speak without hesitation, and the truth, too, or I shall run you through and through. No, no, your master mistakes. He would not have you speak the truth. Madam, my sincerity wants no excuse. Lissardo aside. I am so confounded between one and the other, I can't think of a lie. Sirrah, fetch me this woman back instantly. I'll know what business she had here. Not a step. Your master shall not be put to the blush. Lissardo bows as if to say, You see, sir, I can't help it, and goes up. Come, a truce, Felix. Do you ask me no more questions about the window? and I'll forgive this. I scorn forgiveness where I own no crime, but your soul, conscious of its guilt, would fain lay hold of this occasion to blend your treason with my innocence. Insolent! Nay, if instead of owning your fault, you endeavor to insult my patience, I must tell you, sir, you don't behave yourself like that man of honor you would be taken for. You ground your quarrel with me upon inconstancy. Tis plain you were false yourself, and would make me the aggressor. It was not for nothing the fellow opposed my entrance. This last usage has given me back my liberty. And now my father's will shall be obeyed without the least reluctance. With stern formality and throwing her veil over her face as she exits. And so, your servant... Exit left. Oh, stubborn, stubborn heart, what wilt thou do? Her father's will shall be obeyed. Ha! That carries her to a cloister, and cuts off all my hopes at once. By heaven, she shall not, must not leave me. No, she is not false. At least my love now represents her true because I feared to lose her. 
Ha, huh, villain, art thou here? Turns upon Lissardo, who is trying to steal off left. Tell me this moment who this woman was, and for what intent she was here concealed. Or... Drawing his sword. Ah, good sir, forgive me, and I'll tell you the whole truth. Falls on his knees. Out with it, then. Threatening with his sword quite at Lissardo's mouth. It, 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 it was... Who? Who? Mrs. Flora, sir. Donna Violante's woman. You must know, sir, we have had... What? What? A sneaking kindness for one another a great while. She was not willing you should know it. So, when she heard your voice, she ran into the clothes press. I would have told you this at first, but I was afraid of her ladies knowing it. This is the truth, as I hope for a whole skin, sir. If it be not, I'll not leave you a whole bone in it, sirrah. Fly, and observe if Violante goes directly home. Uh, yes, sir, yes. Fly, you dog, fly. Exit Lissardo left. I must convince her of my faith. Oh, how irresolute is a lover's heart! How absolute is a woman's power! In vain we strive their tyranny to quit. In vain we struggle, for we must submit. Exit right. Curtain. End of Act Two. Act Three of The Wonder A Woman Keeps a Secret by Susanna Sentliver, edited by Augustine Daly. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One, The Street. Enter Gibby left. Ah, this is bonny work indeed. To run three hundred mile to this wicked tune, and before I can well fill my ween to be sent a hunting after this black she devil, what gat shall I gang to spear for this witch now? Ah, uh, for a ruling elder or a kirk's treasurer or his mon, I'd gar my master mac twa o this, but I'm sure there's na such honest people here or there would na be so mickle skulduddery. Enter Violante, right. Ah, vow, man, but I'm glad that ye and I are foregathered. What would the fellow have? Nothing a while, man, no worth your heart. What a muckle deal of mischief had you like bring upon poor Gibby? The man's drunk. In troth I am not. And gin I have found you, ma'am, the laird knows when I should, for my master bade me ne'er gang aim without tidings of you, ma'am. Sirrah, get about your business, or I'll have your bones dropped. Good faith, my master ha e'en done that to your hoons, ma'am. Who is your master, sir? It's no so long you parted wi' him. I wish he ken you half as well as ye ken him. The creature's mad, or mistakes me for somebody else. And I should be as mad as he to talk to him any longer. Exit into Don Pedro's house. Enter Lissardo, right. So, she's gone home, I see. What did that Scotch fellow want with her? I'll try to find it out. Perhaps I may discover something that may make my master friends with me again. Hey, you go, ma'am. A deal scope in your company, but I'm as wheeze as I was. But I'll bide and see was house it is, gin I can meet with any civil body to spear at. Turns and sees Lissardo cross his left. My lad, what you wa lives in your hoose? Don Pedro de Mendoza. And did you see a lady gang in but no? Yes, I did. And ye ken her tay? It was Donna Violante, his daughter. Aside. What the devil makes him so inquisitive? There is something in it, that's certain. Tis a cold morning, brother. 
What think you of a dram? In truth, very well, sir. You seem an honest fellow. Prithee, let's drink to our better acquaintance. Both going right. We all my heart, sir. Gang ye again to the next house, and I shall follow ye. Come along, then. Exit right. Don Pedro de Mendoza. Donna Violante, his daughter. That's as right as my leg, no. As need name air. I'll take a drink, and then to my maester. Exit right. Scene two. Donna Violante's apartments, same as in second act. Enter Isabella in a gay temper, left, and Violante, out of humor, right. My dear, I have been seeking you this half hour to tell you the most lucky adventure. <sighs> and you have pitched upon the most unlucky hour for it that you could possibly have found in the whole four and twenty. I have seen the man I like. And I have seen the man that I could wish to hate. Rises, crosses high. And you must assist me in discovering whether he can like me or not. Ah, you have assisted me in such a discovery already, I thank ye. What say you, my dear? Ah, I say I am very unlucky at discoveries, Isabella. I have too lately made one pernicious to my ease. Your brother is false. Impossible! Most true. Some villain has traduced him to you. Oh, no, Isabella. I love too well to trust the eyes of others. I never credit the ill-judging world or form suspicions on vulgar censures. No, I had ocular proof of this ingratitude. <sighs> but tell me, Isabella, how can I serve you? Thus, then, the gentleman that brought me hither I have seen and talked with upon the Terrerio de Passa this morning, and I find him a man of sense, generosity, and good humor. In short, he is everything that I could like for a husband, and I have dispatched Mrs. Flora to bring him hither. I hope you'll forgive the liberty I have taken. Hither? To what purpose? To the great universal purpose, matrimony. Matrimony? Why, do you design to ask him? No, Violante, you must do that for me. <laughs> I thank you for the favor you design me, but desire to be excused. I manage my own affairs too ill to be trusted with those of other people. I can't for my life admire your conduct to encourage a person altogether unknown to you. Twas very imprudent to meet him this morning, but much more so to send for him hither, knowing what inconveniency you've already drawn upon me. I am not insensible how far my misfortunes have embarrassed you. Then do not deny me this last request, when a few hours, perhaps, may render my condition able to clear thy fame and bring my brother to thy feet for pardon. I suppose he knows you are the same woman that he brought in here last night? Not a syllable of that. I met him veiled, and to prevent his knowing the house, I ordered Mrs. Flora to bring him by the back door into the garden. The very way which Felix comes— if they should meet, there would be fine work. Indeed, my dear, I can't approve of your design. Enter Flora, left. Madam, the colonel waits your pleasure. How darest you go upon such a message, mistress, without acquainting me? So I am huffed for everything. Tis too late to dispute that now, dear Violante. I acknowledge the rashness of the action, but consider the necessity of my deliverance. Ah, oh, that indeed is a weighty consideration. Well, what am I to do? In the next room I'll give you instructions. In the meantime, Mrs. Flora, show the colonel into this. Exit Flora left, Isabella and Violante right. Flora opens door and beckons to Colonel Britton, who enters. The lady will wait on you presently, sir. Exit left. Very well. This is a very fruitful soil. I have not been here quite four and twenty hours, and I have three affairs upon my hands already. 
re-enter Violante right, veiled. Colonel Britton aside. Ah, a fine-sized woman. Pray heaven she proves handsome. I am come to obey your ladyship's commands. Are you sure of that, Colonel? If you be not very unreasonable indeed, madam, a man is but a man. Takes her hand and kisses it. Nay, we have no time for compliments, Colonel. Did you ever see a woman in all your travels that you could like for a wife? Colonel Britton aside. A very odd question. Do you really expect that I should speak truth now? I do, if you expect to be dealt with, Colonel. Why, then, yes. Is she in your country, or this? Colonel Britton aside. This is a very pretty kind of catechism. In this town, I believe, madam. Her name is? I. how is she called, madam? Nay, I ask you that, sir. Oh, oh, why she is called, pray, madam, how is it you spell your name? Oh, Colonel, I am not the happy woman, nor do I wish it. Cross is right. No? I am sorry for that. Aside. What the devil does she mean by all these questions? Come, Colonel, for once be sincere. Perhaps you may not repent it. Faith, madam, I have an inclination to sincerity, but I am afraid you'll call my manners in question. Not at all. I prefer truth before compliment in this affair. Why, then, to be plain with you, madam, a lady last night wounded my heart by a fall from a window, whose person I could be content to take, as my father took my mother, till death do us part. But who she is, or how distinguished, whether maid, wife, or widow, I can't inform you. Perhaps you are she. Oh, not to keep you in suspense, I, I am not she. Cross is left but I can give you an account of her. That lady is a maid of condition, has ten thousand pounds, and if you're a single man, her person and fortune are at your service. I accept the offer with the highest transports, but say, my charming angel, art thou not she? Offers to embrace her. Once again, Colonel, I tell you I am not she, but at six this evening, you shall find her on the Terriero de Passa with a white handkerchief in her hand. Get a priest ready, and you know the rest. I shall infallibly observe your directions, madam. Re-enter Flora left, hastily, and whispers Violante, who starts and seems surprised. Ha! Huh? Felix crossing the garden, you say? What shall I do now? You seem surprised, madam. Oh, Colonel, my father is coming hither, and if he finds you here, I am ruined. What's life, madam? Thrust me anywhere. Can't I go out this way? Crosses up left. No, no, no. He comes that way. Oh, how shall I prevent their meeting? Hesitates, advances a step, again stops in suspense, then resolutely. Here, here. Step into my bedchamber. And be still, as you value her you love. Don't stir till you've noticed, as ever you hope to have her. On that condition, I'll not breathe. Exit right. Violante places chair and sits in center, picks up a book, and pretends to be absorbed in it. Flora sits and pretends to sleep, her head and arms on table. When Felix addresses Violante, she rouses Flora with some difficulty. Enter Felix. I wonder where this dog of a servant is all this while. But she is at home, I find. Aside. How coldly she regards me. You look, Violante, as if the sight of me were troublesome to you. Can I do otherwise? When you have the assurance to approach me after what I saw today... Assurance? Rather call it good nature, after what I heard last night. Pray, give me leave to ask your woman one question. My man assures me she was the person you saw at my lodgings. I confess it, madam, and ask your pardon. <gasps> Impudent baggage! 
Not to undeceive me sooner? What business could you have there? Lissardo and she, it seems, imitate you and me. She rises. I love to follow the example of my betters, madam. I hope I am justified. Violante crosses right. Since we are to part, Felix, there needs no justification. Methinks you talk of parting as a thing indifferent to you. Can you forget how I have loved? I wish I could forget my own passion. I should with less concern remember yours. But for Miss Flora... You must forgive her. Must, did I say? I fear I have no power to impose, though the injury was done to me. Cross is right. Tis harder to pardon an injury done to what we love than to ourselves. But at your request, Felix, I do forgive her. Go watch my father, Flora, lest he should awake and surprise us. Yes, madam. Exit left. Dost thou then love me, Violante? What need of repetition from my tongue when every look confesses what you ask? Oh, let no man judge of love but those who feel it. What wondrous magic lies in one kind look? One tender word destroys a lover's rage and melts his fiercest passion into soft complaint. Oh, the window, Violante, wouldst thou but clear that one suspicion? Prithee, no more of that, my Felix. A little time shall bring thee perfect satisfaction. Re-enter Flora left hastily. Oh, madam, 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 my lord, your father has been in the house and locked the back door and comes muttering to himself this way. Then we are caught. Now, Felix, we are undone. Heaven forbid! This is most unlucky. Let me step into your chamber. There I must conceal myself. Runs to the door, right, and puts his hand on the doorknob. Violante follows him and draws him away, step by step. He keeps his eyes on the door. Pause. No, no, Felix. That's no safe place. My father often goes thither. And should you cough or sneeze, we are lost. Felix aside. Either my eye deceived me, or I saw a man within. I'll watch him close. Oh, invention! Invention! I have it, madam. Here, here, sir. Off with your sword and hat, and I'll fetch you a disguise. Puts Felix's hat on table. Felix aside. She shall deal with the devil if she conveys him out without my knowledge. Bless me how I tremble. Re-enter Flora right with a disguised dress, a riding hood and skirt, old woman's dress. Now give me your hat. He does so. Now your gloves. He does so. Now your sword. Felix, his eyes on door. Uh, no, not my sword. Be sure you don't speak a word. Not for the Indies. Here, sir, put on this. Both assist him to disguise. Puts on dress. Felix tries to get into the front of gown, like pantaloons. Pedro, without, left. Why, how came the garden door open? Enter Don Pedro, left. Ha! Huh. How now? Whom have we here? Tis my mother, and please you, sir. Felix and Flora curtsy. Your mother? By St. Andrew, she's a strapper. Why, you are a dwarf to her. How many children have you, good woman? Violante left aside. Oh, if he speaks, we are lost. Oh, dear signor, she cannot hear you. She has been deaf these twenty years. Alas, poor woman. Why, you muffle her up as if she was blind, too. Turn up her hood. Violante aside. Undone, forever, St. Anthony forbid. Oh, sir, 
She has the dreadfulest unlucky eyes. Pray don't look upon them. I made her keep her hood shut on purpose. <sighs> eyes? Why, what's the matter with her eyes? My poor mother, sir, is much afflicted with the colic. What? Has she colic in her eyes? About two months ago, she had it grievously in her stomach, and was over-persuaded to take a dram of filthy English Geneva, which immediately flew up into her head and caused such a defluction in her eyes that she could never since bear the daylight. Say you so? Poor woman. Well, make her sit down, Violente, and give her a glass of wine. Let her daughter give her a glass below, sir. For my part, she has frightened me so. I shan't be myself these two hours. I am sure her eyes are evil eyes. Well, well, do so. Evil eyes. There are no evil eyes, child. Come along, mother. Crossing left. Goodbye. Take care how you go down, good woman. Felix stops to curtsy three times and stumbles over the threshold of the door. Flora re-enters almost immediately and gets Felix's hat and gloves, concealing them behind her coat again, Violante engaging her father's attention. Exit Felix and Flora. Left. Violante aside. <sighs> I'm glad he's gone. Hast thou heard the news, Violente? What news, sir? Why, Vasquez tells me that Don Lopez's daughter, Isabella, is run away from her father. Oh, he has very ill fortune with his children. Aside. Well, I'm glad my daughter has no inclination to matrimony, that my house is plagued with no suitors. This is the first word I ever heard of it. I pity her frailty. Well said, Violente. Next week I intend thy happiness shall begin. Violante aside. I don't intend to stay so long. Thank you, Papa. My lady abbess writes word she longs to see thee, and has provided everything in order for thy reception. Re-enter Flora left. Thou wilt lead a happy life, my girl. Fifty times before that of matrimony, where an extravagant coxcomb might make a beggar of thee, or an ill-natured surly dog break thy heart. Flora left aside. Break her heart? She had as good have her bones broke as to be a nun. I am sure I had rather of the two. You are wondrous kind, sir, but if I had such a father... I know what I would do. Why, what would you do, minx? Huh? Flora crosses to him. I would tell him I had as good a right and title. You would, mistress. Who the devil doubts it? You were enough to spoil your lady housewife if she had not abundance of devotion. Fie, Flora. Are you not ashamed to talk thus to my father? You said yesterday you would be glad to go with me into the monastery. Did I? I told a great lie, then. She go with thee? No, no, she's enough to corrupt the whole convent. Well, child, remember what I said to thee. Next week I am going into the country for two or three days to settle some affairs with thy uncle, and when I return will provide for thy happiness, child. Goodbye, Violente. Take care of thyself. Exit Don Pedro and Violante left. Flora watches them off. So, now for the colonel. Hist! Hist! Colonel! Re-enter Colonel Britton, right. Is the coast clear? Yes, if you can climb, for you must get over the wash house and jump from the garden wall into the street. Nay, nay, I don't value my neck, if my incognita answers but thy lady's promise. Exit Colonel Britton and Flora, right. Re-enter Felix, left. I have lain Purdue under the stairs, till I watched the old man out. Violante opens the door, left. Tis death I am prevented. 
goes up to observe. Re-enter Violante left. Now to set my prisoner at liberty. She takes four steps stealthily, starts, turns, and looks left. Felix, watching her, advances to right. Pause. Violante then goes to door where the colonel was hid. Uh, sir, sir, you may appear. Felix, who has been following her up to the door, seizes her and turns her over to left. Treacherous woman! Violante aside. Felix, here! Then all is discovered. Felix draws, turns Violante to left. Villain, whoever thou art, come out! I charge thee, and take the reward of thy villainous errand. Violante aside. What shall I say? Nothing but the secret which I have sworn to keep can reconcile this quarrel. A coward! Nay, then I'll fetch you out. Think not to hide thyself. No, by St. Anthony, an altar should not protect thee. Exit right. Violante aside. Defend to be heaven! What shall I do? I must discover Isabella, or here will be murder. Sinks into chair overpowered. Re-enter Flora, quickly, with a gliding step, throwing her hands up in joy. I have helped the colonel off clear, madam. Exit with a quick sidestep. Sayst thou so, my girl? Then I am armed. Sits center with her eyes riveted on Felix and laughing at him as he re-enters right. Violante bursts into a loud fit of laughter and points at him in derision as he rushes on with his back to audience. Pause. He turns from her in amazement, then turns to her again. Where has the devil, in compliance to your sex, conveyed him from my resentment? Him? <laughs> Whom do you mean, my dear inquisitive spark? <laughs> Will you never leave these jealous whims? <laughs> ah. Will you never cease to impose upon me? You impose upon yourself, my dear. Do you think I did not see you? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> and resolved to put this trick upon you. <laughs> Imitates her manner of crossing right. Trick, trick, trick. <laughs> Yes, trick. I knew you'd take the hint and soon relapse into your wanted air. <laughs> How easily your jealousy is fired. I shall have a blessed life with you. <laughs> Was there nothing in it, then, but only to try me? Won't you believe your eyes? My eyes? No, nor my ears, nor any of my senses, for they have all deceived me crosses to right. The moment a man lets a woman know her conquest, he resigns his senses and sees nothing but what she'd have him. And as soon as a woman finds her love returned, she becomes as errant a slave as if she had already said yes at the altar. The priest, Violante, would dissipate those fears which cause these quarrels. When wilt thou make me happy? Tomorrow I will tell thee. Crosses right, they meet center. But leave me now, lest some accident should bring my father. Tomorrow then. Fly swift, ye hours, and bring tomorrow on. Kisses her hand. Tomorrow we shall meet to part no more. Oh, rapturous sounds, do thou like me, each doubt and fear remove, and all to come be confidence and love. Exit Felix, left, Violante, right. Curtain. End of Act Three. Act Four of The Wonder, A Woman Keeps a Secret by Susanna Sentliver. Edited by Augustine Daly.
This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Four, Scene One, Frederick's House as Before. Enter Felix and Frederick Wright. This hour has been propitious. I am reconciled to Violante, and you assure me Antonio is out of danger. Your satisfaction is doubly mine. Enter Lissardo left. What haste you made, sirrah, to bring me word if Violante went home? I can give you very good reasons for my stay, sir. Yes, sir, she went home. Oh, your master knows that, for he has been there himself, Lissardo. Sir, may I beg the favor of your ear? What have you to say? Lissardo whispers, and Felix seems uneasy. Huh. Felix changes color at Lissardo's news. What can it be? A Scotch footman? That belongs to Colonel Britton, an acquaintance of Frederick's, say you? The devil aside if she be false by heaven i'll trace her whispers lissardo and sends him off left prithee frederick do you know one colonel Britton, a scotchman yes why do you ask me nay no great matter but my man tells me that he has had some little differences with a servant of his that's all he is a good harmless innocent fellow I am sorry for it. The colonel lodges in my house. I knew him formerly in England, and met him here by accident last night, and gave him an invitation home. He is a gentleman of good estate, beside his commission, of excellent principles and strict honour, I assure you. Crosses left. Here he comes. Enter Colonel Britton, left. Colonel, I began to think I had lost you. And not without some reason, if you knew all. There's no danger of a fine gentleman's being lost in this town, sir. That compliment don't belong to me, sir. But I assure you, I have been very near being run away with. Who attempted it? Faith, I know not. Only that she is a charming woman. I mean, as much as I saw of her. Felix aside. My heart swells with apprehension. Some accidental re-encounter? Come, unfold. The colonel takes an arm of each and draws them close to him, telling his story with great gusto. Felix, in an agony of suppressed irritation. Why, then, you must know, gentlemen, that I was conveyed to her lodgings by one of Cupid's emissaries called a chambermaid, in a chair, through fifty blind alleys, who, by the help of a key, let me into a garden. Felix aside. Sedeth a garden. This must be Violante's garden. From thence conducted me into a spacious room, told me her lady would wait on me presently, so, without unveiling, modestly withdrew. Felix aside. Damn her modesty! This was Flora. Well, how then, Colonel? Then, sir, immediately from another door issued forth a lady, armed at both eyes, from whence such showers of darts fell around me that, had I not been covered with the shield of another beauty, I had infallibly fallen a martyr to her charms. For you must know, I just saw her eyes. Eyes, did I say? No, no, hold. I saw but one eye, though I suppose it had a fellow equally as killing. Well, well, sir, what then? <laughs> Pretending to laugh, but his face turned aside, showing intense ill humor. <laughs> Why, upon her maid's giving notice, her father was coming. She thrust me into the bedchamber. Upon her father's coming? Aye, so she said, but putting my ear to the keyhole of the door, I found it was another lover. Felix aside. Confound the jilt, t'was she without dispute. Up and down the stage. Ah, poor colonel. <laughs> I discovered they had had a quarrel, 
but whether they were reconciled or not, I cannot tell. For the second alarm brought the father in good earnest, and had liked to have made the gentleman and me acquainted, but she found some other stratagem to convey him out. Contagion seize her, and make her body as ugly as her soul. There is nothing left to doubt of now. Tis plain t'was she. Ha <laughs> ha! Frederick and Colonel laugh. Felix aside. Sure he knows me, and takes this method to insult me. So death I cannot bear it. Colonel Britton to Felix, playfully taking his arm and turning him around. Felix turns away. Colonel pulls him around again. Why, you don't seem to enjoy the joke. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> oh. Tries to join in laugh, but ends with a groan. But, sir, dear sir, do hearken to this. The nymph that introduced me conveyed me out again over the top of a high wall, where I ran the danger of having my neck broke, for the father, it seems, had locked the door by which I entered. Felix aside. That way I missed him. Damn her invention. Pray, Colonel. Colonel and Felix laugh. Ha, ha, ha. It's very pleasant. <laughs> Was this the same lady you met upon the Terrario de Passa this morning? Faith, I can't tell, sir. I had a design to know who that lady was, but my dog of a footman, whom I had ordered to watch her home, fell fast asleep. I gave him a good beating for his neglect, and I have never seen the rascal since. Here he comes. Felix pacing the stage to and fro. Enter Gibby, left. Where have you been, sirrah? Truth, I've been seeking you, and like your honour, these two years and mere. I bring thee glad tidings, sir. What? Have you found the lady? Good faith I have, sir. And she's called Donna Violante, and her parent, Don Pedro de Mendoza. And gin you'll gang with me, and like your honour, I'll make you ken the hoose reet well. Felix aside. Oh, torture, torture. Upstage. Colonel Britton aside. Ha! Violante! That's the lady's name of the house where my incognita is. Sure, it could not be her. At least it was not the same house, I am confident. Violante? Tis false. I would not have you credit him, Colonel. The del tack me, sir, gin I lee. Sirrah, I say you do lie, and I'll make you eat it, you dog. Seizing him and throwing him over, kicks him. And if your master will justify you? Not I, faith, sir. I answer for nobody's lies but my own. If you please, kick him again. Gibby gets right. But gin he does, I'll now take it, sir. Gin he was a thousand Spaniards. Walks about in a passion. Colonel Britton apart to Gibby. I owed you a beating, sirrah, and I am obliged to this gentleman for taking the trouble off my hands. Therefore, say no more, d'ye hear, sir? Truth, d'ye I, sir, and feel to. This must be a mistake, Colonel, for I know Violante perfectly well, but I'm certain she would not meet you upon the Terriero de Passa. Don't be too positive, Frederick. Now I have some reasons to believe it was that very lady. You'll very much oblige me, sir, if you let me know these reasons. Sir! Sir, I say I have a right to inquire into these reasons you speak of. Ha <laughs> ha! Really, sir, I cannot conceive how you or any man can have a right to inquire into my thoughts. Sir, I have a right to everything that relates to Violante, and he that traduces her fame and refuses to give his reason for it is a villain. Draws. Colonel Britton aside. What the devil have I been doing? Now blisters on my tongue by the dozens. Frederick crosses between them. Prithee, Felix, don't quarrel till you know for what. This is all a mistake, I'm positive. Look you, sir, that I dare draw my sword, I think will admit of no dispute. But though fighting's my trade, I'm not in love with it, and I think it more honourable to decline this business than pursue it. 
This may be a mistake. However, I'll give you my honour never to have any affair, directly or indirectly, with Violante, provided she is your Violante. But if there should happen to be another of that name, I hope you will not engross all the Violantes in the kingdom. Felix crosses. Your vanity has given me sufficient reason to believe I am not mistaken. I'll not be imposed upon, sir. Nor I be bullied, sir. Bullied? So death such another word, and I'll nail thee to the wall. Are you sure of that, Spaniard? Draws. Gibby draws. Say no more, mon. Oh, my soul, here's twa to twa. Gin up here, sir. Gibby stands by ye for the honour of Scotland. Vapours about. Frederick crosses, comes down center. By St. Anthony, you shan't fight on bare suspicion. Be certain of the injury, and then— That I will this moment. And then, sir, I hope you are to be found. Whenever you please, sir. Exit Felix quickly. Colonel goes up stage, Frederick trying to soothe him. So death, sir, there ne'er were a Scotsman yet that shamed to show his face. Struts about. So quarrels spring up like mushrooms in a minute. Violante and he were but just reconciled, and you have furnished him with fresh matter of falling out again. And I am certain, Colonel, Gibby is in the wrong. Gin I be, sir, the mon that told me lead. And gin he did, I'll lick him as long as I can hand a stick in my hand, and now you see. I am sorry for what I have said, for the lady's sake. But who could divine that she was his mistress? Prithee, who is this warm spark? He is the son of one of our grandees, named Don Lopez de Pimentel, a very honest gentleman, but somewhat passionate in what relates to his love. He is an only son, which may perhaps be one reason for indulging his passion. When parents have but one child, they either make a madman or a fool of him. He is not the only child. He has a sister, but I think through the severity of his father, who would have married her against her inclination, she has made her escape. And notwithstanding, he has offered five hundred pounds. He can get no tidings of her. Ha! Huh. How long has she been missing? Nay, but since last night, it seems. Colonel Britton aside. Last night? The very time. How went she? Nobody can tell. They conjecture through the window. This must be the lady I caught. Crosses centre. Dear Frederick, I beg your pardon, but I had forgot I was to meet a gentleman upon business at five. I'll endeavour to dispatch him and wait on you again as soon as possible. Crosses right. Your humble servant, Colonel. Exit left. Gibby, I have no business with you at present. Exit left. That's real. Now I will gang and seek this loon, and gar him gang with me to Don Pedro's hoose. Gin he'll no gang by himself, I shall gar gang him by the lug, sir. Gibby hates a lee. Exit right. Scene two. Violante's apartment. Enter Violante and Isabella, left. The hour draws on, Violante, and now my heart begins to fail me, but I resolve to venture for all that. What? Does your courage sink, Isabella? Only the force of resolution a little retreated, but I'll rally it again for all that. Enter Flora, left. Don Felix is coming up, madam. My brother! Which way shall I get out? Dispatch him as soon as you can, dear Violante. I will. Exit right, Flora exits left. Enter Felix in a surly humor, throws himself sulkily into a chair. Felix, what brings you back so soon? Did I not say tomorrow? Felix aside. My passion chokes me. I cannot speak. Oh, I shall burst. Rises in agitation and sits again. Bless me, are you not well, my Felix? Yes, no, I don't know what I am. Heyday, what's the matter now? Another jealous whim? Felix aside. With what an air she carries it. If I were in your place, Felix, 
I choose to stay at home when these fits of spleen are upon me, and not trouble such persons as are not obliged to bear with them. Here he affects to be careless of her. I am very sensible, madam, of what you mean. I disturb you, no doubt, but were I in a better humour, I should not incommode you less. I am but too well convinced that you could easily dispense with my visit. When you behave yourself as you ought to do, no company so welcome. But when you reserve me for your ill nature, I waive your merit, and consider what's due to myself. And I must be so free to tell you, Felix, that these humours of yours will abate, if not absolutely destroy, the very principles of love. Felix rises. And I must be so free to tell you, madam, that since you have made such ill returns to the respect that I have paid you, all you do shall be indifferent to me for the future, and you shall find me abandon your empire with so little difficulty that I'll convince the world that your chains are not so hard to break as your vanity would tempt you to believe. I cannot brook the provocation you give. This is not to be born! Insolent! You abandon? You, whom I have so often forbade ever to see me more? Have you not fallen at my feet, implored my favor and forgiveness? Did you not trembling wait and wish and sigh and swear yourself into my heart? Ungrateful man! If my chains are so easily broke as you pretend, then you are the silliest coxcomb living you did not break em long ago. And I must think him capable of brooking anything on whom such usage can make no impression. I always believed, madam, my weakness was the greatest addition to your power. You would be less imperious had my inclination been less forward to oblige you. You have indeed forbade me your sight, but your vanity even then assured you I would return, and I was fool enough to feed that vanity. Your eyes, with all their boasted charms, have acquired the greatest glory in conquering me, and the brightest passage of your life is wounding this heart with such arms as pierce but few persons of my rank. Walks about in a great passion. Matchless arrogance! True, sir, I should have kept measures better with you if the conquest had been worth preserving but we easily hazard what gives us no pain to lose. As for my eyes, you are mistaken if you think they have vanquished none but you. There are men above your boasted rank who have confessed their power when their misfortune in pleasing you made them obtain such a disgraceful victory. Up and down to face him. Yes, madam, I am no stranger to your victories. Cross is right. And what you call the brightest passage of my life— is not the least glorious part of yours. Down left. Ha <laughs> ha! Don't put yourself in a passion, madam, for I assure you, after this day, I shall give you no trouble. You may meet your sparks on the Terrario de Passa at four in the morning without the least regard to me, for when I quit your chamber, the world shan't bring me back. I am so well pleased with your resolution, I don't care how soon you take your leave. But what you mean by the terriero de pasa at four in the morning? I can't guess. They face each other. No, 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 not you. You were not upon the terriero de pasa at four this morning. Violante crosses. No, I was not. Shot at her positive denial. He turns away with a gesture of disgust. She continues and speaks with firm resentment. She paces up and down. He follows her. But, if I was, I hope I may walk where I please and at what hour I please without asking your leave. Oh, doubtless, madam. And you might meet Colonel Britton there, and afterward send your emissary to fetch him to your house, and upon your father's coming in, thrust him into your bedchamber without asking my leave tis no business of mine if you are exposed among all the footmen in town nay if they ballad you and cry you about at a halfpenny apiece they may without my leave crosses to left audacious don't provoke me 
don't. My reputation is not to be sported with. Going up to him. At this rate. No, sir, it is not. <laughs> Bursts into tears. Aside. Inhuman Felix. <laughs> oh, Isabella, what a train of ills thou hast brought on me. <laughs> <laughs> sits on sofa right felix aside ha now she's crying i cannot bear to see her weep a woman's tears are far more fatal than our swords oh violante is a death what a dog i am now i have no power to stir dost thou not know such a person as colonel Britton? prithee tell me didst not thou meet him at four this morning upon the terrero de passa were it not to clear my fame i would not answer thee thou black ingrate rises but i cannot bear to be reproached with what i even blush to think of much less to act <laughs> By heaven, I have not seen the terriero de paz of this day. <sighs> Did not a Scotch footman attack you in the street, neither, Violante? Yes, <sighs> but he mistook me for another, or he was drunk, I know not which. And do you not know the Scotch colonel? Pray ask me no more questions. This night shall clear my reputation and leave you without excuse for your base suspicions. More than this, I shall not satisfy you. Therefore, pray, leave me. Didst thou ever love me, Violante? I'll answer nothing. You were in haste to be gone just now. I should be very well pleased to be alone, sir. Sits down on right and turns aside. I shall not long interrupt your contemplation. Aside. Stubborn to the last. Violante aside. Did ever a woman involve herself as I have done? Felix aside. Now would I give one of my eyes to be friends with her, for something whispers to my soul she is not guilty. I'm going. I'm going. Pulls a chair and sits by her at a little distance, looking at her some time without speaking. Then he draws a little nearer to her. Give me your hand at parting, however, Violante, won't you? She draws her chair away as he torments her with his feather. He follows her up and finally lays his hand upon her knee. Won't you? Won't you? Won't you? Violante, half regarding him. Won't I do what? You know what I would have, Violante. Oh, my heart. Violante smiles. I thought my chains were so easily broke. Lays her hand in his. Felix draws his chair close to her and kisses her hand in a rapture. Too well thou knowest thy strength. Oh, my charming angel, my heart is all thy own. Forgive my hasty passion. Tis the transport of a love sincere. Oh, Violante, Violante. Pedro, without. Bid Sancho get a new wheel to the chariot presently. Violante, down center. Bless me, my father returned. Your father? The devil. What shall we do now, Felix? We are ruined past redemption. No, 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 my love. I can leap from the closet window. Runs to the door right, where Isabella is, who closes it. Noise of bolts heard within. Confusion. Somebody bolts the door with inside. I'll see whom you have concealed here if I die for it. O oh, Violante, hast thou again sacrificed me to my rival? Draws. By heaven, thou hast no rival in my heart. Let that suffice. Nay, 
Sure you will not let my father find you here. Distraction. Indeed, but I shall, except you command this door to be opened, and that way conceal me from his sight. He struggles with her to come at the door. Hear me, Felix. Though I were sure the refusing of what you ask would separate us forever, by all that's powerful, you shall not enter here. Either you do love me or you do not. Convince me by your obedience. That's not the matter in debate. I will know who is in this closet. Let the consequence be what it will. Nay, 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 you strive in vain. I will go in. You shall not go in. Enter Don Pedro, left. Hey, day. What's here to do? I will go in. And you shan't go in. And I will go in. Why, who are you, sir? Felix aside. Sidneth, what shall I say now? Don Felix, pray what's your business in my house? Ha, huh, sir? Oh, sir, what miracle returned you home so soon? Some angel twas that brought my father back to succor the distressed. This ruffian, I cannot call him a gentleman, has committed such an uncommon rudeness as the most profligate wretch would be ashamed to own. As I was at my devotions in my closet... Devotions? I heard a loud knocking at my door, mixed with a woman's voice, which seemed to imply she was in danger. I flew to the door with the utmost speed, where a lady, veiled, rushed in upon me, who, falling on her knees, begged my protection from a gentleman who, she said, pursued her. I took compassion on her tears and locked her in this closet. But in the surprise, having left the door open, this very person whom you see, with his sword drawn, Felix sheathes his sword, ran in, protesting if I refused to give her up to his revenge, he'd force the door. Felix aside, What in the name of goodness does she mean to do? Hang me? I strove with him till I was out of breath, and had you not come as you did, he must have entered. But he's in drink, I suppose, or he could not have been guilty of such an indecorum. Crosses left, signs to Felix. I'm amazed. Felix aside. The devil never failed a woman at a pinch. What a tale has she formed in a minute. In drink, quota, a good hint. I'll lay hold on it to bring myself off. Fie, Don Felix! No sooner rid of one broil but you are commencing another. To assault a lady with a naked sword derogates much from the character of a gentleman, I assure you. Felix counterfeits drunkenness. Ah, uh, who? Uh, I assault a lady? Crosses center. Upon honor, the lady assaulted me, sir, and would have seized this body politic upon the king's highway. Let her come out and deny it, if she can. Pray, sir, command the door to be opened, and let her prove me a liar, if she knows how. Ay, ay, who doubts it, sir? Open the door, Violente, and let the lady come out. Come. I warrant thee he shan't hurt her. No, no, I won't hurt the dear creature. Aside. Now, which way will she come off? Come forth, madam. None shall dare to touch your veil. I'll convey you out with safety, or lose my life. Aside. I hope she understands me. Noise of bolt heard, right. Enter Isabella, veiled. Violante leads her to Don Pedro, who leads her off left. Felix watching closely. Felix over Violante's shoulder. Is it really a woman, though? Violante laughing, but speaking low. <laughs> Come and see. <laughs> Get clear of my father, and return when all mistakes shall be rectified. Exit left. Felix offers to follow her. Pedro draws his sword. 
Not a step, sir, to the lady be past your recovery. I never suffer the laws of hospitality to be violated in my house, sir. Come, sir, you and I will take a pipe and bottle together. Damn your pipe and damn your bottle. I hate drinking and smoking. First, he will have a pipe and a bottle. And then, he won't have a pipe and a bottle. And when I want a pipe and a bottle, he don't want a pipe and a bottle. And when I do want a pipe and a bottle, he doesn't want a pipe and a bottle. As to smoking or drinking, you have your liberty. But you shall stay, sir. Felix crosses right. But I won't stay, for I have been drinking burgundy and champagne and imperial toquet. I have been drinking champ. But I love my country better, and I don't like you. And I won't stay, for I have the best reason in the world for my not staying. I? What's that? Why, I am going to be married, and so goodbye. To be married? It can't be. Why, you are drunk, Felix. Drunk? Ah, to be sure. You don't think I'd go to be married if I was sober. But drunk or sober, I am going to be married for all that. And if you won't believe me, to convince you, I shall show you the contract, old gentleman. I do. Come, let's see this contract, then. Yes, yes, I'll show you the contract. I'll show you the contract. Here, sir, here's the contract. Draws a pistol. Pedro seizes a chair, and Felix follows him around. Well, well, I'm convinced. Go, go, pray go and be married, sir. Yes, yes, I'll go. I'll go and be married. Going and then returning. But shan't we take a bottle first? No, no. Pray, dear sir, go and be married. Very well, very well. Going, then returning. But I insist upon your taking one glass, though. No, not now, some other time. Consider the lady waits. Felix aside. What a cross old fool. First he will, and then he won't. And then he will, and then he won't. But you'll take one glass. Pedro seizes a chair. Oh, go and get married. All right. I'll go and get married. Exit. Enter Vasquez, left. Here's Don Lopez. Pedro, not seeing who it is, picks up a chair and holds it before him. Go and get married. Ah, it, it's you. Well? Here's Don Lopez de Pimentel to wait on you, senor. What the devil does he want? He's not going to be married, too. Bring him up. Exit Vasquez left. He's in pursuit of his son, I suppose. Enter Don Lopez left, seen in by Vasquez. I am glad to find you at home, Don Pedro. I was told that you were seen upon the road to... this afternoon. That might be, my lord. I had the misfortune to break the wheel of my chariot, which obliged me to return. What is your pleasure with me, my lord? I am informed that my daughter is in your house. That's more than I know, my lord. But here was your son just now as drunk as an emperor. My son drunk? I never saw him in drink in my life. Where is he, pray, sir? Gone to be married. Married? To whom? I don't know that he courted anybody. Nay, I know nothing of that. But I'm sure he showed me the contract. Within there, re-enter Vasquez. Bid my daughter come hither. She'll tell you another story, my lord. She's gone out in a chair, sir. Out in a chair? What do you mean, sir? As I say, sir, and Donna Isabella went in another just before her. Isabella! And Don Felix followed in another. I overheard them all. Bid the chairs go to the Terriero de Passa. Voices heard outside. But I see they have all returned, for here is Donna Violante, and company with her. 
Enter Colonel Britton, Felix, Isabella, Violante, Lissardo, and Flora Wright. So have I found you, daughter. Then you have not hanged yourself yet, I see. But she is married, my lord. Married? Zounds! To whom? Even to your humble servant, my lord, if you please to give us your blessing. Kneels. Lopez to Isabella. Why, hark ye, mistress, are you really married? Really so, my lord. Crosses with Colonel and both kneel to Lopez. Lopez to Colonel Britton. And who are you, sir? An honest North Britain by birth, and a colonel by commission, my lord. She has played you a slippery trick indeed, cousin. To Violante. Well, my girl, thou hast been to see thy friend married. Next week thou shalt have a better husband, my dear. Next week is a little too soon, sir. I hope to live longer than that. What do you mean, sir? You have not made a rib of my daughter too, have you? <laughs> indeed he has, sir. I know not how. But he took me in an unguarded minute, when my thoughts were not over-strong for a nunnery father. Your daughter has played you a slippery trick, too, signor. But your son shall never be the better for it, my lord. Her twenty thousand pounds were left on certain conditions, and I'll not part with a shilling. But we have a certain thing called law. Shall make you do justice, sir. Well... We'll try that. My lord, much good may it do with your daughter-in-law. I wish you much joy of your rib. The old men go up. Enter Frederick left. Frederick, welcome. I sent for thee to be partaker of my happiness. And pray, give me leave to introduce you to the cause of it. And now, my Violante... I shall proclaim thy virtues to the world. Let us no more thy sex's conduct blame, since thou art a proof to their eternal fame that man has no advantage but the name. A few mistakes our sex may well excuse, and this our plea no woman should refuse. Your approbation, ladies, can't but move the hearts of men which first you taught to love. And they must applaud if you but favor, and to success but give the savor. Curtain. End of Act Four. End of The Wonder A Woman Keeps Her Secret by Susanna Sentliver, edited by Augustine Daly.